Hey, hey, I'm Shay Keister, and I'm your host for the Casual Cattle Conversations podcast, the beef producer's place to explore new management practices. Thanks for tuning in, and welcome to the community. We know that buying bulls isn't all about the numbers, but there's an app out there that makes it easier for you to sort through the data and spend more time looking at the bulls. Bullpen is a free app that makes it easier for cattlemen to find bulls that meet their criteria. Whether bulls are selling by private treaty or auction, you can search for EPD ranges, location, or specific breeders. You can even see the sale details, get directions, connect with the breeder, and get a link to the video catalog, all from the app. You can save bull profiles beforehand, or in just a few seconds, you can pull up their profile in the pen on sale day. This is developed by Nebraska Rancher. Bullpen is available from Apple or Google Play. It requires no user account, has no in-app purchases, no ads, and respects privacy. Go to getpen.com to get the app or get more information. Hey, hey, folks, it is Shay Warner, and thank you for tuning in to another episode. Today, we are going to be talking about goal setting as cattle producers. So we are going to talk about why goal setting is important, how to do it, how to make it work for you, and how to stay on track. Should be a fairly quick episode for you, but I'm excited to bring that to you. Just a friendly reminder before we get started, one of the best ways to support podcasts you like, social media creators, and small businesses can actually be free to you. And it's as simple as taking five seconds to share our posts with family and friends, share our emails, our podcast episodes, um, talk about products maybe you've purchased in the past, even if you can't purchase or anything this year. Um, just simple things like ratings, reviews, comments, shares is so simple and it helps us so, so much. So as you're online and doing some of that holiday shopping, remember that that's a great way to support us as well. So back to the goal setting conversation, it is something that is really important. I'm not sure who said this quote, but a goal without a plan is just a dream. And I think that's really important to remember because so often we have great intentions and we just never do anything. Or maybe we have that goal up in our head, but we get a month down the road and we're so busy with everything that's going on that it simply gets bypassed and then we try and get on track and then we feel behind and it's really just a vicious cycle. So I want to talk about it a little bit today and how you can make goal setting work for you and your ranch because like I just said, a goal without a plan is just a dream. And not that there's anything wrong with dreaming, but you got to take steps to achieve it. So ranches are businesses or, you know, if you have a ranch and it's more a hobby for you, that is perfectly fine. But a lot of what I talk about on this show is more focused for, for those cattle producers who want to really focus on their ranches as being businesses and being profitable. And so if we are looking at and treating our ranches as businesses, then businesses need goals because having goals with your business is such a key component to remaining profitable, keeping up with change and having direction. Goals really create clarity and they make decision-making easier. I mean, when it comes down to decision-making and as cattle producers, we make so many decisions throughout the day that there can almost be fatigue that comes from it. But Knowing what your goal is and knowing what direction you want to go. And when you're faced with a decision, you know, you can ask, is this investment commitment or decision I'm about to make getting me closer to my goal? Yes or no. And it can be in so many instances that simple as to what you decide to do, but you have to know where you want to be, where you are and where you want to be in order to do that. So that's a little bit on why goal setting is important, but I think we need to talk about different methods for goal setting because a lot of us have been exposed to goal setting from an early age. And one thing I always used to kind of get frustrated with goal setting about was I, there's a lot of different methods and I'm going to share a few of them that have worked for me and what they all kind of have in common, because I think there's commonalities within goal settings, but which method you use is personal preference to you and your team and your family, however you want to look at it. So a few to think about. One um, that I like are OKRs. Um, These are kind of similar to KPIs. OKR stands for objective and key results. KPIs are key performance indicators. And then um, one of the basic ones that you're probably most familiar with would be SMART goals. So SMART stands for specific, measurable, attainable, 
relevant and timely, I believe. And then the other goal setting methods that I've used would be like, where do you want to be one month from now, three months from now, six months from now, 12 months from now, and five years from now. And so those are a few that have been the most effective for me. And there's some things that they just all have in common, but I'm going to take a step back and talk a little bit about OKRs and SMART goals. And then the one, three, six, 12 months and five years from now. So Objective and key results, what that looks like is you kind of have an overarching objective in the center. And from there, there are four key results that you want to see happen. And that's how you're going to know or measure that you are attaining that objective that you really want, if that makes sense. So like for me, my objective is to I'm looking at my whiteboard here, equip ranchers with the resources they need to be profitable. And that's kind of a broad objective, but um, for ranchers, it could look like a number of different things. You could be more specific with that as well. And then off that, like I said, I have four key results that are more measurable. Um, There's usually a number in there and that's going to, uh, that's how I help measure if I'm achieving it or not. And then under those, I have three action steps um, to help keep me on track with my goals. And I will put a link to OKRs in the show notes so that way you can take a better look at what I'm talking about. Next, we have SMART goals. So SMART goals, that's um, each letter in SMART stands for something, as I mentioned earlier. And SMART goals are, I think they're a great start because it helps you get specific um big thing with goals is that they're measurable there's the time date um time component of it i liked it um i'm more of a dreamer and visionary so sometimes i have trouble with goal setting because i like really like to set what are sometimes called impossible goals which do have their place um i was once advised to actually set what's called an impossible goal like a goal you know you cannot reach, but you just strive for it anyways and accept like, it's almost like, because you know, you can't reach it, but you're still going to chase after it. You actually get closer to it than you realize. It's a really cool kind of mindset piece, but, um, smart goals are nice because they keep you on track. They're simple. They're usually should be more attainable for you and relevant to what you're doing. Um, and then the one month, three months, six months, 12 months, five years from now, Those are, it's really as simple as saying one month from now, I want to blank. Three months from now, I want to have blank. Six months from now, I want it to look like this. One year from now, I want it to look like this. Five years from now, it's going to look like this. And I, I really, personally, my preference would be the OKRs and then the, that final method, the one, three, six, 12, and five years from now, because, um, Like I said, just because I am visionary, those are a few that I gravitate towards the most just because it allows me to sit back and visualize what I really want um, and how I want to feel at those specific time points. So those are a few methods that I like. Like I said before, it can be anything that works for you. Um, Those are just what work for me. The main thing when you are picking a method of goal setting is make sure it is clear and specific, make sure it is measurable, and give yourself a deadline. It needs to be clear and specific because if it's broad, like I want to be, I want to sell the best bulls in my breed. Okay, well, what are the best bulls in your breed? What are the best bulls to your customers? Like what, what do those look like? Um, if you have trouble narrowing down and creating specific goals, then I would encourage you to, you know, take that big goal and break it down smaller. The reason you want to be clear and specific is because it's going to help you actually achieve your goal. If it's too broad, you're not going to be able to measure if you hit it and you're not really going to even know what direction you're going or how to get there. And so that takes me back to measurable. You me- you need it measurable because like I just said, you need to know if you're actually getting there. So making a goal measurable would potentially look like one year from now, I want 
to decrease my input costs by 2% or 5% or whatever it looks like for you. Maybe it's more than that. But you have something to go off of, something to measure by to see if you're actually on target and reaching that. And that also included the deadline because with that deadline, like I said, one year from now, I want to decrease my inputs by X amount. And so it's measurable because it's specific because I know exactly what I'm looking at input cost. It's measurable because I know by what percent I want to decrease it. And I gave myself a deadline. So that is the clear, it's measurable, it's a deadline. You have a deadline. Those are the three things I would really encourage you to have as you are setting goals. Um, and so maybe with that, if we're talking about reducing input costs by, you know, X percent, but it might, your a more specific goal would be reducing input costs by X percent without sacrificing animal health or well-being and remaining in the top third for performance at weeding or whatever it may be. If you don't want to lack performance, like keep all of those in there. It all just depends on what matters to you. You need to know what matters to you in your operation first before you even set goals. So for those of you who are maybe like, I'm not sure what types of goals to set. Something that I have a lot of fun with is just doing a quick 15 minute brainstorm. And if you are on a family operation, I remember I would encourage you to bring multiple people into this. And it's, it's really fun because it's a brainstorming session, which means no one's allowed to shut down ideas. All you get to do is write stuff down on a whiteboard, on a piece of paper, whatever it may be, but talk about what went well, what's not going well, visualize your ideal life five years from now, what needs to change to get there, what makes it your ideal life, and what challenges have you faced in the past repeatedly? You know, what are some recurring challenges that you'd really like to change? And so then, in that brainstorming, especially if you're bringing in other people, so, you know, pick one, you know, everyone can visualize their ideal life five years from now separately. Um, but I would encourage you to think about, especially those, what challenges are you facing, especially the ones that maybe you're facing repeatedly and everyone can, you know, throw them out, just talk about them. And then with each one, you can quick ask for solutions or ideas. They don't have to be the perfect answer. You can scrap them later. It's brainstorming. It's all about just throwing ideas out there. And then from there, you can pick three to five problems you want to focus on. Look at those goals and ideas and see what's in line or where you really want to focus. Trust your gut and then define them as goals. Make them clear and specific. Make them measurable. Give yourself a timeline. And from there, once you kind of have those three to five goals or even two to three, I personally think even five big goals a year is a lot. Um, it depends on how big the goal is. I like to keep it more towards three, but it's up to you and how many people you have helping you. But once you have those goals written down, work backwards, create a timeline and, and in a sense work backwards. So say, you know, if your deadline is a year from now, you know, what all needs to happen within that year for you to get there. And then print out a calendar, write out a calendar, go on a computer, whatever it may be, and pencil in like, well, this needs to be done by this date. This needs to be done by this date. Right down to just the little steps like research this, call this person, have the research done by month one, um, have more of an action plan by month two, whatever it looks like for you, just work backwards. So that way you're on that timeline. Now, speaking of goal setting, I want to take a quick second to talk about the Rancher Mind program. If you are interested in setting goals for you and your family's operation and meeting with experts monthly, meeting with a community of progressive producers in that process once a month, and these are not webinars, folks. These are producer-driven conversations with some of the top-tier industry experts who will help you stay on track and improve your operation. And uh, if you want access to this community then I would encourage you to go to my website, casualcattleconversations.com or send me a message and I will connect you to these people. We will figure out where you fit into the program and how you can get involved. But if you really want to take steps towards improving your operation and uh, being happy with what you're building and proud of what you're building, then I'd encourage you to join this program. But with that, so back to goal setting. So we've talked about different types of goals you can set. We've talked about how to set goals, but let's talk about staying on track because that's another thing that 
I hear from cattle producers, I hear from other business owners is that staying on track with goals is a challenge. And so one thing that I do is it can be setting phone reminders. So maybe your goal might even be a personal goal of being more grateful because that's important in all business. Um, Set a phone reminder that goes off and talks about gratitude. If you really want to stay committed to being a better leader on your operation, set a phone reminder that goes off at noon as a midday reminder saying, I am the leader for my operation because I do X, Y, Z, or, you know, whoever you want to be or whatever you're working towards, set a reminder. So it pops off and you read that regularly or pops up and re- you can read that like regularly. You can do this with sticky notes. You can write your goals down on sticky notes and put them somewhere you see them, whether it's a mirror, your computer desk, your tractor cab, whatever it may be. Implement stuff into your morning routine. Use a whiteboard. And more importantly, tell your family and friends about it. If you tell your family and friends about what you're doing, you're much more likely to commit to actually doing it. And so those are a few ways to remind yourself that you have goals. So as we kind of wrap up, I also want to talk about adjusting goals. Adjusting goals is really important because sometimes we set goals and we think we're setting them out of the right place, but we're not. We think that we are setting them for us, but sometimes we set them because of other people's thoughts and opinions and we didn't even realize it. So it's important to revisit your goals quarterly and make sure the goals are still serving you. Maybe you went to a conference or had a conversation that completely changed your mind and you want to change the trajectory of your business. If that is in alignment with what you're doing, then change it and adjust your goals accordingly. But do it thoughtfully as well. You don't want to be pivoting every quarter. If that's the case, maybe we need to think a little bit about exactly where your operation really wants to be, your business wants to be. But be open to adjusting and shifting your goals to make them right to you. They should grow and change with you. They should feel right and you should be able to trust your gut. So with that, um, I hope you enjoyed this quick episode. I want to encourage you to take some steps. So make time in your calendar to set goals within the next 24 to 48 hours. And the sooner the better or else you're going to lose momentum. So this is literally as simple as saying, hey, Siri, set a reminder for tomorrow to set goals at noon. And that is, you know, you can do that right now just so that you do not lose momentum. Because I believe in you. I believe that there are so many smart and talented beef producers. And I want to help you uh, gain clarity and direction. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you want more content like this, if you want completely different content, uh, give me your feedback. Let me know what topics you want to hear. And thanks for tuning into this episode. And remember to head to the show notes for a few more resources. Happy ranching, folks. And that's a wrap on that one, folks. Thank you for tuning in today and joining in on the conversation. Be sure to take this a step further and take the advice you learned and implement it on your operation. If you want to have a conversation about it, head over to my social media and send me a DM by following at Cattle Convos and connecting with me there. Have a great day.